We planned for a defensive struggle for the last six months, and in the end, it ended up being the host Aggies struggling with Notre Dame's defense for 60 minutes. This is Irish Illustrated Instant Analysis, brought to you by the RV Manufactured Housing Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana, and Tim Priester. Fourth quarter, Notre Dame owned the fourth quarter, and I looked at you during that press conference and wondered aloud, is my offensive MVP the Notre Dame offensive line for their second half effort? We certainly didn't expect that, but Notre Dame ends up with 198 yards rushing, and you're right, Tim. I mean, 5.8 yards per carry. I mean, that's would, the end of it. That's I, the you know, I yards realize, per carry. Yeah, I mean, I realize a couple long carries ends up skewing that a little bit, but, I mean, what a what what a performance. I, I, you know, I you come in here expecting it to be difficult. It was, mm-hmm. but I, when you add up everything, like, you know, pre-snap issues, of course, there were a couple of false starts, but there weren't any more than what Texas A&M had. Right. And I just, you know, they did a tremendous job on Nick Scorton. Uh, Marcus Freeman said that there wasn't anything special planned for him. They didn't have to because Anthony Knapp handled him. Yeah. And he would bounce over and try to challenge Emil Wagner a couple times, but it didn't really matter. He couldn't make any headway. Notre Dame had 11, ter- uh, 11 penalties, rather. But, like, when the game was close, uh, you know, I said – you can't lose this game because you're up two right, nothing right. in uh, the turnover margin, and they didn't. And they were outstanding in the in the fourth quarter. Riley Leonard was 18 for 30 for 158 yards, rushed for 63 yards. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about here, but uh, Marcus Freeman was aggressive early in the third quarter when you wouldn't when you thought, okay, it's a it's a slugfest. They have to punt the football. They go for it, and even at the end of the game. You don't want to risk a blocked field goal, but he confidently sends out Mitch Jeter, and he kicks his third field goal, his second 46-yarder of the night. I'm joined by John Bryce from footballscoop.com as well. And, John, I had a colleague say to me when we were walking out, when's the last time we were in this part of the country and you saw Notre Dame as the faster team? Notre Dame was the faster team. We talked about it. We talked this week that we felt very strongly. I think my term was Marcus Freeman, Chad Bowden, and the rest of that staff has so raised the floor of Notre Dame's athleticism. And we saw that on display tonight. And we see that uh, when a guy like Leonard Moore is on special teams or Bryce Young is on special teams all night. Logan Thomas. Logan yeah. Thomas, exactly. Um, playing in key situations as well late in the game. Trust there. Um, as much in their athleticism and talent, I believe, as their knowledge of the system right now. Um, to me, Notre Dame owned the fourth quarter. Yes. Eight minutes and 46 seconds time of possession. 106 of Notre Dame's 350 yards of offense came in the fourth quarter on the road, mind you, before 107,500. Texas A&M only had 58 yards in the fourth quarter. And yes, Notre Dame had 11 penalties in the game. They only had three in the fourth quarter and outscored their hosts 17 to seven in the second half, um, obviously. 10, 10 of those points coming in the fourth quarter. I'll have another penalty stat in a minute. That's a mind blower, I'm just telling you. Another odd stat is that Jadarian Price, he's, Jadarian Price is the one that kind of helped Notre Dame open up his offense a little bit in the third quarter with a 47-yard touchdown run. It sure didn't seem like Jadarian Price finished that game with 44 yards after that 47-yard cutback touchdown run. But you're looking at the running backs. You knew Price and Love would be a one-two punch. At times we thought maybe Price was about to take over in this game, but it, Love in the end is the one that finally inside runs he was able to break free score the touchdown where you finally felt 20 to 13 John Bryce's predicted score almost came true it was 20 to 13 and you felt the defense will not give this up at that point no and they did a a tremendous job against Connor Wigman Uh, you know you watch what Connor Wigman has done in his previous eight starts and you're impressed by it he finished badly 12 (laughs) of 30 with two interceptions a total of 100 yards he made a lot of very poor throws Notre Dame's defense was, was, I mean, absolutely outstanding. And, you know, you, you look at this and you say, okay, uh, it's Mike Elko's first year. It's going to take a little bit of time. But you're in this environment, and you realize how difficult it's going to be. And Notre Dame withstood everything that was thrown at them. And what I, the, the aggression to go for it on fourth and one in the third quarter just tells you that Marcus Freeman is fearless. And when he has an opportunity to – to put a nail in the coffin, he'll do it. Look, I said Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame had to prove it. They absolutely proved it. We talk about different players that we need to see it. Drake Bowen, yes. we saw yep. it from him. Jalen Steed had a very yeah, good day we're, as well. we're gonna do Yeah, we're going to do Irish Illustrated overtime. We'll get into more of all of this. But just, a, a you know, it, it's a team that we hear that they believe, but you hear that from every team right. every year. They showed it tonight. A lot of confidence in themselves and what they're capable of doing. Two things we knew about Riley Leonard, and they're, they're actually related. Incredible amount of grit, 
and incredible amount of toughness. He is a winner, and that was his best trait today. He, he's, he's going to struggle with some throws, although he's not going to struggle with as many throws going forward without that defensive line harassing him. And I said the offensive line was the MVP. It's because they made it through the game and then were at their best in the fourth quarter. They really had a battle on their hands prior. I'm going yeah. to share this video shortly on, on Twitter. I'm going to go ahead and tease it now with the uh, edited version. Gino Gadouli hugs Riley Leonard on the field, mm -hmm. about the last two people from the Notre Dame contingent leaving the field. Gino wraps him in a bear hug and says, you're an effing winner. You're a winner. And um, Riley Leonard proved that tonight in the toughest environment that Notre Dame will play in all season long. I want to follow up on your all's great points on the coaching and the aggression there. I thought that, that Notre Dame won this game on all three headsets, the head coach, the defensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator. You could throw a fourth headset in there because Marty Biaggi had to have shown enough from his special teams unit along with his analyst, Jesse Smith, that they trust Jeter in all three of those situations. They were big situations, but especially that last situation. So I thought that that was huge from the coaching staff. I really think that, that Marcus Freeman got in Mike Elko's head because he went for those two fourth downs near midfield, got one, didn't get the second one. Elko came down and went twice on fourth down, right. like a like a third, or fourth and five or six, didn't get it, and then a penalty still went for it. I thought that was a real turning point in the game, a real stand by the Notre Dame defense. Finally, I'm going going to deliver the stat. I promise. I've been waiting for the stat. So you should have been. You should, you should have been. You should you should be listening right now. This is the third time in the Marcus Freeman era, and and all three have been in the last two seasons that Notre Dame has committed ten or more penalties in a game. Eleven tonight. All three of those contests on the road all three of those contests victories for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish at North Carolina State, at Duke, and tonight at Texas A&M. Yeah, you know, Mitch, I want to throw in one more thing about Mitch Jeter because we saw him struggle in the spring. We saw him miss some in August. He's kicked in this stadium before. Money. He's familiar Money with Mitch. That's what he's, I he's familiar with SEC venues. And, and what does he do? He calmly comes in here. He kicks two 46-yarders, a 26-yarder. Um, this is really, really impressive team. They've got they've got stuff to do. I mean, they're they're they were a little bit depleted at defensive tackle at times tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, Howard Cross was they were trying to mix him in there, but there were periods where he wasn't playing. We saw Riley Mills on the sideline. He was completely gassed. You don't have Gabe Rubio. We're seeing Heinish and Onye getting pushed off the ball at times, yeah. but they're still resilient enough to come back and make plays. And, and what what they hold them to? 246 yards total offense. Irish Illustrated Instant Analysis is now brought to you by the RV Manufactured Housing Hall of Fame. Irish Illustrated Overtime is coming up. If we can find a spot up in the friendly confines of the Aggies press box for Tim Priester and John Bryce. I'm Tim O'Malley. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be on our YouTube channel and Facebook page soon. Final score, Notre Dame 23, Texas A&M 13.